Good morning. Uh, welcome to today's session. Um, today we have Dr. Xi Liang, Secretary of the UK-China Guangdong uh, CCUS Centre, Senior Lecturer in Energy Finance at the University of Edinburgh, a Professor in Sustainable Infrastructure at University College London. Um, Dr. Liang is going to tell us about CCUS development in China and Guangdong, Carbon Capture Technology Centre, the GCCT. Over, over to yeah. you, Xi, please. Tell yeah, us about yeah. CCS in China. <laughs> Uh, so thanks, John and the uh, UKCCSRC for inviting me to uh, the communication this event. So I have give you an overview about CCS development in China uh, and uh, uh, a bit about the Guangdong Carbon Capture Technology Centers. And so uh, CCS has become a emerging technology and now become the uh, uh, fund fundamental technology defined by the government in the China's climate policy uh, agenda. Uh, since September last year, China announced a carbon neutral goal and the role of CCS has become much more important and there are more than 100 new projects emerge yeah, in the country, which I will talk a bit more later on. Uh, and then since last September, I really can have more than four hours, five hours sleep every day because it's so busy in every sectors in, in the country. And I'm also responsible for uh, climate investment and finance, uh, a, a, a number of programs. So uh, initially, Ministry of Science Technology was taking the lead for CCOS and later become NDRC and, and now uh, Ministry of Environment and Ecology. Uh, but almost every department in China are very keen to promote CCOS. Uh, and they recognize CCOS as the only technical choice for low carbon utilization of fossil fuel, while China's fossil fuel share is still quite high. And uh, uh, the Chinese power system needs to uh, increase flexibility to accommodate significantly higher renewable. And people are working on Germany's system, how it accommodate high percentage renewable. So, in that regard, keeping remaining fossil fuel plant, uh, they need to be uh, working with carbon capture and storage. And for those hard to abate sectors and industry like cement and steel, uh, CCS is a viable option, although it's now still expensive. And uh, more people are recognizing CCS with negative emission technologies, uh, such as air, uh, direct air capture, biomass with CCS, uh, uh, biomass co-firing with CCS or fully biomass with CCS, a uh, possible way to achieve negative emission as an important technical pathway to achieve carbon neutrality. Uh, so uh, there are about 21 projects, uh, sorry, the, the, the translation doesn't complete for this slide. There are 21 projects in operation uh, by 2020, as you can see from the map on the right, and the majority of projects in the laws of China and the, in the petrochemical and the power sector. Uh, there are only one project in the cement sector, in, which is conscious cement, and there's not, not yet a project in the uh, steel sector. And in the South China, uh, the UK-China collaboration enabled the first project, which is a high form carbon capture project. And the majority of projects are still quite small, and there's not no more not, not yet any projects uh, higher than half million tons levels. There, there are uh, a CCS policy apart from national level, more than sixty uh, 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 regional policies are emphasized. More than sixty national policy emphasizing CCS, and more than a hundred policies at the provincial level uh, supporting CCS. Only three provinces doesn't release any policy for CCS. But although there are many policies for supporting CCS, there are, uh, there are uh, in inadequate uh, financial support. Uh, we are trying to work with OGCI on the paper, which will be released in October, uh, talk about what will be the financial support requirement for promoting CCS in China. And uh, uh, there are uh, Ministry of Science and Technology has um, developed the CCS roadmap in 2019 and propose China should develop CCS as cluster because this will be uh, financially more viable, the uh, uh, abatement cost will be much lower. So pointed out six different uh, reservoirs and the clusters, including uh, Odos Basin, Jungle Basin, uh, Songliao Basin, Bohai Basin, 
and the Sichuan Basin and the, uh, the region I'm work, mainly working on is the Peru Mouse Basin. Um, you, as you can see from Shanghai, the east of China to Hainan, there's no offshore onshore storage space. So this area representing seven to 9% of global carbon emission, you have to use offshore uh, storage very similar to uh, the Europe. And some area in the laws and the laws west and laws east of China have excellent CO2 storage opportunity and, 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 the, and the can progress uh, quite fast as well. Uh, so Ministry of Science and Technology also uh, proposed the technical pathways and uh, uh, to map out what will be key uh, CCS uh, component from emission source to capture transport utilization storage and the products. And we know uh, utilization apart from EOR is still quite expensive, but it's easier to get stakeholder accepted. So uh, it's part of the bigger picture. And the application of BECCS and DAC technology to achieve negative emission now uh, become quite important to achieve the goal of net zero emissions. And uh, uh, this, there are also some uh, sourcing works on uh, coal fire power plants, cement plants, steel plants uh, in uh, each sector. So uh, just show you some of the uh, works coming from the CCS roadmap. And cost reduction is quite important to uh, make CCS viable. I think uh, the government is form formulating various policy for potentially disruptive technology to reduce the cost for CCOS because now uh, the country commits to peaking of carbon emission and uh, uh, carbon neutral uh, objective. Uh, as you can see um, from the diagram on the right hand side, uh, hopefully the cost reduction can uh, uh, reach the point to the same as a carbon price and make CCS fully commercialized. Uh, in the past, without the carbon neutral objective, launched last year, we estimate the tipping point is about 2030 to 2035. It's likely this could happen earlier between 2025 to 2030. And I personally estimate China will start to capture most of high emission from high concentration sources by the end of uh, the next, by the end of this five year program. But uh, they need a lot of uh, support to do early stage work right now to make sure this high concentration source of CO2 can be captured, which, which may be higher than 200 million tons of CO2. Uh, so uh, some, some study by uh, market analysis uh, from financial market estimated uh, by 2060, China will have uh, more than 1 billion tons of CO2 being captured and up to 1.8 billion. And uh, in the next uh, few years, the total number will go to uh, 9 to 30 million tons. So 30 million tons is still quite high, almost equal to all the CO2 being captured in the world every year right now. So it, across the coal fire power plant, gas power plant, steel and iron, cement, ECCS, DACCS, and the OGCI, we have a more accurate estimate. Uh, myself and the China Petroleum University were working on the project that we are not allowed to release until October. So, so that one uh, have, we, we have a very uh, detailed picture about each sector's CO2 reduction potential and the target. And CCS also will bring in a lot of emerging business opportunity and we have already got many inquiry about how to do CO2 storage, including both onshore and offshore. And uh, you will be pleased to see uh, Guangdong province will start to work on or uh, actual offshore storage, CO2 storage projects. And after Norway and maybe Australia, we become the third country to injecting CO2 offshore for CO2 storage or starting from 2023. Um, hopefully by uh, in the next few months, there will be a announcement. So offshore storage, CO2 storage, will also bring in many industry opportunity uh, for oil and gas sectors, uh, including like uh, characterization of storage site uh, monitoring well service company, which is a particularly limit uh, knowledge in, in, in China on offshore storage and assessment of storage size. Um, so many experts were, were invited by uh, oil company to work on uh, storage size uh, assessment confirmation. 
uh, transportation of CO2, including ship transportation and the pipeline transportation. Um, we, uh, and, uh, uh, and also in the future, there are also some third party service opportunities. And there are also discussion on potential business model to make CCOS happen. There are many ways and has been used by various of projects across the world, uh, but vertical model, joint venture, operator model, transporter model, uh, it's likely in the longer term, CO2 tr transport and storage will become infrastructure service. It's like a, a electricity grid service while capture firm will pay for uh, how to like a tipping fee to do with their CO2. But in the short term, uh, there are still various opportunity like large oil company, they will have a vertically integrated model have their own CO2 source being captured by their own firm and the transport and storage in their side. Uh, but, but I think there are many projects ex experimenting other different models. And financing CCS also is interesting. A lot of uh, discussion focus on the final investment decision, but there's inadequate support to earlier site selection concept uh, and earlier feasibility study. In this regard, I think the uh, UK government provide funding support for Asian Development Bank uh, in the last 10 years, which has done excellent jobs in uh, providing some uh, capacity building and feasibility study support for early stage project. And it continue will be quite important. Imagine if we can uh, fund uh, 100 larger scale CCS projects, earlier stage work, and it can maybe 20 to 50% return to larger scale project because the policy environment is much more favorable than, uh, and, than, than uh, five years ago or even two years ago. But still there are people who are ignoring the importance of have, uh, uh, have uh, adequate uh, professionals, uh, uh, professional works on site selection and many projects, once the CEO want to do it, they want to do it next year or next month. So which will put a lot of risk and pressure on the project. So proper size selection and the feasibility study is quite uh, important. And I think China will require a lot of international support in terms of uh, knowledge and capacity uh, in the next few years. Um, and uh, there are also uh, risk analysis on CO2 storage. It's also an area uh, my colleague uh, working on, uh, on in particular, how risk analysis will inform the permitting and the regulatory framework of CCS in China. Uh, so uh, ho hopefully this could, uh, could, uh, could work out. And we, we also need to learn from experience in the UK and in Europe so on, on uh, risk analysis and uh, to build up a proper regulation in Chinese uh, legal system. Uh, and at the moment, there's no definition of CO2 storage uh, after it's stored, who has the responsibility and uh, whether oil company will have a natural extension of right to use their oil and gas fuel to store CO2. So currently there are many gray area need to be, uh, uh, be worked out in the next couple of years. So capacity building, in this field is also quite important. So it, let's have a look at Guangdong. Uh, big, uh, I'm very delighted because it's supported by UK CCS Research Center, Scottish CCS and the UK governments in the 2013. Uh, we set up the UK China Guangdong CCS Center and Xie Zhenhua is still very active right now. And he, uh, given, he, he was uh, awarding the play to Professor John Gibbon and the counterpart at the GEDI, uh, President Law, uh, with the provincial government's leader. And uh, just five minutes before the launch of the Guangdong ETS. Uh, so the photo on the right was the ceremony of signing the, uh, the collaboration between UK and China. And uh, we tried to develop a couple of CCS projects at, at, in Guangdong and uh, the pilot project has been Kickoff, uh, which is uh, uh, the carbon capture testing platform uh, in iPhone. Uh, the investment has already been made, the plant study operation from 2019, and, and uh, we'll try to test it more technology. So, like shell cancel 
MTR and uh, 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 CO2 to algae technologies are now being tested and there are about three or five technologies are being killed uh, for testing. So there are other projects in Guangdong uh, I, I'm now working on to converting them into technology testing center. So the Guangdong Carbon Capture Technology Center we are covering uh, two coal-fired power plants and one natural gas power plant in the very near future. So we will make some announcement quite soon. So uh, you are welcome to visit and use the platform, hopefully after uh, COVID-19 has been, uh, been mitigated and released, we can travel. So the, the plant is located uh, in, in the beach. And uh, in, now the phase two of the project is want to do 1 million ton CO2 capture and ultimately try to capture uh, 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 9 million tons of CO2 from both uh, coal-fired power plant and to try to develop a natural gas power plant with full CO2 capture to deal with uh, 4 million tons uh, uh, CO2 from natural gas power plant. And currently the phase two feasibility study is underway. So the testing centers have uh, initially set up uh, aiming technology and the membrane separation technology uh, to tef testing different aiming and uh, testing MTR's membrane. And we identify some problem in uh, membrane separation and try to uh, convince how to resolve the problem. In the uh, aiming uh, absorption, we also tested some packing from uh, Switzerland and also, uh, which, which is uh, come out of result is quite good and the, the aiming unit is running quite smoothly. Uh, we also build a compression unit and a pretreatment unit. Uh, and some of the CO2 has been converted into a uh, 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 full grade CO2 and some of the CO2 being used for other industry purpose. So that's the photo of the uh, carbon capture uh, unit, pretreatment unit and the compression purification units. So uh, the the project will continue operation. I try to I will try to convince them uh, use open and sharing attitude to develop the project. And I'm now sp uh, spending much less time on this project because there are more than eight projects uh, the centers are currently managing in Guangdong and uh, in Jiangsu and the Shanxi uh, province. But the project is an excellent start because we try to connect industry, academic, and the government together to support the projects. Uh, and maybe this is a project, uh, uh, only project that make China resource power earning money because, uh, uh, they, uh, because, of, because of the uh, uh, policy incentive for uh, developing CCS in Guangdong. So we have uh, also have support from USDOE, Asian Development Bank to uh, make this project happen. Uh, we also published some papers uh, in the past. So in, in terms of way forward, Guangdong uh, have four larger scale CCS project uh, in development. So including in Shenzhen city, uh, about just five kilometers from my home, uh, there's a coal-fired power plant want to do half million tons of CO2 capture uh, demonstration and uh, to scale up to full capacity by 2030. And uh, there's one cement plant in the lost west of Guangdong want to do large scale CCS, but we are, have a difficulty on how to access to CO2 storage site. And an oil company, uh, they, because they haven't announced, so I wouldn't tell the name, but they are going to do an offshore storage very soon. And this is, also, this is a very exciting project, which will capture the flue gas uh, from their, uh, their own reservoir in oil production and injecting this flue gas back to a reservoir, similar to a Steiner project. Um, so CCS in the steel and the cement industry are also, uh, we are also working on a few projects and uh, because the steel and the cement industry in China contribute to more than half of global production in the world. So, and uh, these two sectors are difficult to be replaced by renewable technology, at least in the short term. So which makes CCS very quite uh, important. Um, so I wouldn't go through uh, every, slides i'm sure you know a lot so we also did some mapping on uh, cement and steel how to deal with their co2 is potential co2 storage size um, in guangdong and the guangxi province the blue uh, spot is a steel plant and the purple one is a cement plant as you can see 
there are many cement plants actually located very close to their mine, to which is very, very difficult to access the storage size. Uh, so so uh, we also did some cost estimate and some more detailed study on uh, CO2 uh, uh, capture of power steel, large steel cement steel plant built very uh, 10 years ago, quite recently, and uh, estimate the cost is, is about four, uh, is, is about 400 uh, yuan per ton CO abatement cost for getting rid of the CO2 at a million ton scale. Um, and we also did some study on uh, at the different process uh, in the cement plant and how to deal with the CO2 from different uh, process um, and work out the uh, carbon abatement cost as we said uh, is about 448 yuan per ton uh, CO2 and with offshore transport and storage core in about 11, 112 yuan per ton CO2. Uh, so I just give you a quick overview on uh, CCOS in China and the bit of works in Guangdong. And uh, um, uh, I'm happy to take questions if you have questions. Uh, 